Hello students and now we are going to discuss about a new chapter which is introduction to structured query language SQL which is also pronounced as SQL. So when you consider the structured query language SQL it is actually the most standard and widely used programming language to work with the relational databases. I'll tell you what is meant by the relational databases and all these stuff. So actually if you consider uh, the relational databases uh, we work with uh, information which is in the form of tables so to store and maintain these kinds of databases we make use of a tool called sql which is structured query language sql and before we get into the concept we will uh, first go through all the terms which is related to sql first of all data so data means what is meant by a data which is nothing but an information or you can also say it, uh, say it as an uh, raw information. For example, if I'm giving you some numbers in your hand and if I'm not conveying any uh, information related to the number, any 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 sort of uh, um, idea rega regarding that number, you will not uh, know what to do with that, right? You will just consider that as an information given by the teacher. But in case, if I'm providing you with uh, an acknowledgement, uh, like uh, these are the mark list of the students of class 11, you will get an idea of what to do with that. And if I'm asking you to prepare uh, an, an Excel sheet based on the mark list, you will start to work on it, right? So that is uh, that that represents a data. So if uh, an information, if a raw information is there in your hand, that represents a data. And when it comes to database, so database is nothing but the group of related information. So a group of related information in the sense, if I, if I'm preparing a mark list of the students, I will be collecting all the details regarding the students like roll number, admission number, and the marks of all the five subjects of the respective student. All these details I will be gathering it. I will not include any sports related deta uh, details or any uh, book related details and all in the mark list uh, in, in the mark list data, right? So a group of related information is nothing but database. So a data means a raw information. Whereas a database means the group, a collection of related information. For example, if I have the number 2 and 3 in my hand, I, I will not do anything with that number. But only when I do some processing like addition or multiplication or subtraction, I will be able to get the desired output, right? But if you have the uh, numbers just like 2 and 3 in a paper, it is just an information. So though that kind of information is nothing but a data. This is just for your understanding purpose. Yes. And database means a collection of related information. Now, DBMS, which is Database Management System. So when it comes to DBMS, um, it is nothing but a software actually. Uh, after collecting all the related information, you can just maintain a hard copy in your hand. So having a hard copy in your hand, there is no use at all. In case if I have to submit all the mark list of the student to the CBSC board, what I have to do, I have to submit only the soft copy first of all, right? So in case if I have to upload it to the website, I have to create a soft copy. So to create a soft copy, we need a software. For example, if you consider Excel, in Excel what we will do, we will create the mark list of the students and we'll do all those stuffs, right? And if needed, we will send the mark list to the respective boards or if we, have, if we are supposed to upload it in the website, we will be able to upload it. So we need a software to work with it, right? So similarly, after collecting all the related information to work on the data which we have collected, we need a software called DBMS that is called Database Management System. So some of the DBMS softwares which uh, we currently use nowadays are MySQL, so this is MySQL, uh, PostgreSQL, and then MS Access and Oracle. Then next, Relational Database Management System, so RDBMS. So if you consider Relational Database Management System to work with the tabular related data, to, uh, in uh, after collecting the data, actually in RDBMS, all the data will be represented in the form of tables. So uh, to work with the tabular data, we make use of this uh, tool called RDBMS, which is Relational Database Management System. And there is uh, um, the reason behind calling it as a Relational Database Management System. For example, uh, I have told you in a table, uh, we will store everything in the form of tables, whatever data we have collected, right? And before we work with those tables, first thing that we do is we will create a database. 
in MySQL. So we are going to work with the software MySQL and in that we will first create a database. So creating a database is much like creating a folder in your computer. So you know very well how to create a folder in your computer, right? So after create, why do we create a folder? To store all the files in our system, we, may, we will create a folder. Just like that, if we store somewhere in the desktop, sometimes we will find it difficult to retrieve the files. So to avoid all those things, what we will do, we will go to the respective drive this and uh, I'll show you an example regarding this so that you will understand much more better. Okay, so if you consider this folder, see here inside this class 11 folder, I have stored so many files. Uh, the, there are different types of files we are storing inside it, right? Uh, so here I have in, uh, created a folder here. Uh, uh, the video folder is there and then a PDF file is there as well as the Word document is there and then uh, the uh, text file is there. So many different types of files are available over here. So uh, what we are doing here actually is we are saving everything in a particular folder. Similarly, what we are doing, uh, similarly, in MySQL also to work with it, what we have to do here is we have to create a folder which is called database. In the sense, we will first create a database and inside the database, uh, we will create as many files as we want. We can create as much of uh, files as we want. A table is also called as a file clear a table is also called as a file also you will also called as a re, you will also call it as a relation because all the tables which we create inside a database are related to one another for example if i'm creating a database as school yes inside the school database i i, I should create the tables related to the school database like i will i will be i may create the student table i may create the teacher table or non teaching staffs table and then um, the mark list uh, of the students table so if i create a student table all the details relevant to the student uh, details will be there in the table if i create a table for the teacher the details relevant to the teacher will be present in the table so i cannot mix and match everything so uh, the relevant details I will be uh, I will be inserting inside each and every table and all the tables are related to one another because a student will approach the teacher for help and the teacher will approach the management for help. So everyone are related to one another and you will be able to link all the uh, tables at some point of time. Right. So that's why we call it as the relational database management system as it deals with the table related data. Now you understood. And now I have told you a table is also called as a relation or a file. Right. So a table consists of rows and columns. So you can now consider the simple example, your Excel spreadsheet. Yes, when you work with Excel, entirely you have uh, uh, you have only the rows and columns and in that rows and columns only you will be working with all the stuffs, right? So much similar to that here also we will work with the rows and columns which is the table. So your table usually consists of rows and columns and now a row is also called as a tuple or a record. Yes, a row is also called as a tuple or a record which is nothing but the horizontal subset in a table. Yes, each and every row is also called as a record or even you will call you can call it as a horizontal subset or you can even call it as a tuple and now column a column is also called as an attribute or field also you can all uh, you, you can also call it as the vertical subset. Yes. And now degree. If you consider degree, the number of columns in a table, for example, if you have five columns in a table, if I ask you a question, what is the degree of the table? Your answer will be five because you have five columns in the table. Similarly, cardinality. So cardinality, if you consider these, uh, it represents a number of rows in a table. So how many number of rows represents a cardinality? Okay. Now, what is the database management system? So the same thing they are going to repeat here. So why do we uh, need DBMS uh, software? So to create and maintain the database on a computer. Actually, uh, if you consider Python, so Python is a, uh, is a language where we will use the Python software as a front end uh, thing. So Python languages, it is used uh, as a front end software, whereas the SQL language is used as the back end software. The reason is you can connect the Python uh, language with the SQL uh, language. Actually, whatever uh, result you're going to give in Python, everything will be able, everything you can save it in SQL directly by connecting it with one another. 
and uh, the results can be stored and retrieved for future reference so that is the reason why do we make use of the dbms software clear so to create and maintain the database on a computer we need this program called database management system and uh, it helps us to create and maintain all the databases so some of the popular dbms are they have given here as mysql postgresql then ms access oracle so all these uh, softwares or example or some popular database management system software so, and some of the advantages uh, of using this dbms tools are if you consider uh, it produces very flexible reports uh, both on screen and on paper and it sorts and manipulates the data in the database uh, and uh, you will be able to query the database querying in the sense uh, if you uh, send query that is instructions or in the form of questions it will give you the appropriate results right you can ask questions about the data so if i have created the entire table and if i wanted to retrieve one particular set of record i can retrieve it with the help of the queries so those things we will be discussing in the upcoming uh, classes at that time you will be able to understand very easily so these are some of the uh, advantages of dbms and tables so as i have told you relational databases uh, it stores data in the form of tables right so it it is much similar to the spreadsheet which you see in excel and it consists of rows and columns so same thing they are repeating here so if you consider this is how we will usually create a table right so whenever we create a table usually we will provide the uh, we will provide the id if we are going to create a student table we will provide the roll number or admission number for reference so usually instead of referring with the name we will refer the student with the student id or with the admission number because uh, sometimes uh, two students may come up with the same name so to avoid confusions we will provide a unique number for each and every one so like that here they have created a customer table so for customer uh, they have provided an id and then first name of the customer last name of the customer address and then telephone number so this represents the column that is the vertical subset and this represents the horizontal subset which is the row clear so this one particular set of row is also called as a record or tuple and a column is also called as an attribute or fields so these are called column names that is customer id first name last name address telephone number all these things you will call it as column names or attributes or field names right so for each and every term you have many different meanings so we have to be aware about it now relational databases so as i have told you relational database deal with the tables data will be organized into the separate table so once you have created the table you will be able to create a relationship among the tables so you will be able to create a link among the tables so such databases if you consider they store data in separate tables and you will be able to relate each and every table with the previous uh, uh content previous columns which you have created already so if you see here they have created a database called the learner i have told you before we create a table we have to create the database yes database acts like a folder so here they have created a database learner so inside the learner database how many tables they have created here see three tables that is student table participant table and activity table so student table in student table you have two columns student name and student id and here what they have done is uh, they have given inserted some values some four different student names and the ids of the students similarly the same student id uh, they have given here in the participant table so participant table in the sense you can relate the student table with the participant table because the same student uh, will have the same id and they may participate in many different activities like swimming dancing tennis and all these things so each and every student will have uh, different uh, uh, will have uh, will have different interest in uh, various fields right so the same student id i'm going to use here instead of using the student name so based upon the id i'm going to uh, relate it with the activities that the students have chosen and now when it comes to activity table so i have to provide the cost for each and every student for the activity they have chosen yes now activity uh, will become the column name over here the same activity which i have given in the previous table and here i have provided the cost for each and every activity so now can you understand so starting from the student table participant table and activity table all the tables has been related to one another and i have created a link from one table to the other table we understood how why uh, we are calling this table uh, uh, as a relation or else a file 
So this is how we will be working with the tables and all these three tables comes under the database learner. Okay. Now we will discuss about some of the terminologies related to RDBMS. So some of the terminologies, if you consider, you have uh, many different types of uh, terms like primary key, candidate key, foreign key, alternate keys. So why do we make use of these keys? So when we are creating a table, if you see here, uh, once we create a table, we need to maintain um, a unique ID for each and every table because every time uh, I cannot uh, I cannot refer a student with the name because sometimes us two students may have the same name that I have told you already. So to avoid confusions, we maintain the ID of the student or ID of the customer or ID of the employees, right? So when we maintain IDs for each and every person, we will find it easy. And those kinds of IDs are referred to as primary key because with the help of the ID only, we were able to recognize the respective student. You understood. So with the help of the ID of the student, we were able to retrieve the entire record of the student. So the, we will give more importance to the ID. So those kinds of uh, keys which help us to uniquely identify the record in a table is called a primary key. You understood? So the purpose of the primary key is nothing but the ID, the, the key which helps us to uniquely identify a particular record in a table is called as primary key. Clear. For example, admission number, patient number, account number, all these things you can consider as an example of primary key. And now candidate key. Candidate key is nothing but the key which is capable of becoming the primary key is called candidate key. I'll repeat again. The key which is capable of becoming a primary key is called candidate key. Even using the candidate key, we, we will be able to identify the record uh, uniquely in a table. That is, uh, sometimes uh, uh, we may uh, until the student gets the roll number in the school, we will provide admission number for the student. Right. So it may take even a month for the student to get their roll numbers or register numbers. Till that we will be uh, recognizing the student with their admission number along with their name. So their admission number acts like a primary key. Got it. So those kinds of keys are also called as candidate keys. Clear? So candidate key is an attribute or a set of attributes that uniquely identifies a row. Attribute means I have told you it is also called as a column. Right? So primary key is also one of the candidate keys. And now uh, look at here. Yes. Here they have given the admission number and roll number they have given. So admission number can also act like a primary key as well as roll number can also act like a primary key. So when we, it is up to our wish, we can set the prime admission number as the primary key and we can set the roll number as the candidate key. Yes. So when we execute all the queries and all those stuff, so I will teach you how to create a primary key and foreign key and all. Then alternate key. Alternate key in the sense, um, the rest of the keys, apart from primary and candidate key, all the other candidate keys are called alternate keys, right? Like name, class, section, dues. So all the other candidate keys are referred to as alternate keys. And now, okay. So introduction to MySQL. So MySQL, uh, it's a language. And uh, to work with that, we use the software to manipulate the relational databases, which is nothing but it is one of the RDBMS software. So MySQL is one of the RDBMS software. And then uh, we use this MySQL to create and maintain all the relational database management systems. Clear. And some of the characteristics they have given here and how it has been pronounced like MySQL. And then it was originally founded and developed by um, David uh, Axmark and Alan Larson and Michael Vidinius. So they all work together to create this particular language. So some of the characteristics they have given here, like it is an open source uh, software and uh, you don't have to pay for it to download the software and it is uh, it works very fast, highly reliable and then uh, it is platform independent. So you can work with any platforms in the sense like a Windows, Unix, Linux. So and, and it has the compatibility with many languages like Java, C++, compatibility with other languages in the sense you can um, you can uh, save all the datas or uh, datas which you give in the front end we, you can save all the values which you give in the front end software as a database here in the back end in mysql and uh, it is also very easy to install and it is capable of handling large sets of data so these are some of the characteristics of mysql 
and after installing mysql once you open it this is how it will look like first it will ask you to enter the password and once you give the password immediately it will display the uh, version number and this is how the mysql prompt will wait for the user to enter the to give the instruction so in python we have the three greater than signs as the command prompt python command prompt here mysql command prompt will look like this and it waits for the user to provide the instruction to exit from mysql we have to type quit or exit to come out of it so this is how you will enter into mysql once you finish installing it and now let us see how to create a database in mysql to create a database i have told you creating a database is much similar like creating a folder in mysql right so only inside the folder we will be able to store all our files right for example if you are going to save uh, the games files uh, for the, the software so the game software so you will create a separate games folder and inside that you will save all your games uh, related files right so similarly to work with mysql first you have to create a database that is first you have to create a folder and inside that you have to create all the respective tables so inside a database you can create as many tables as you want so to create a database the syntax to create a database is create database database name here school is the database name and um, database name is completely user uh, defined and you can give any name that you want but when you are giving the uh, name um, which is much similar to the variable related rules so for variables we have learned some rules right similarly whatever database name we create it should be relevant to uh, the content which we are uh, creating for example if i'm going to prepare the database and if i'm going to work with a table related uh, i mean a school related uh, information i have to give names according to that for example school database means i have to give the create the database with the name school and inside that if i have to create the student details i can create a data i can create the table name as student and for teacher related information if i have to create the table i can create uh, the table name as teacher right so like that we can create uh, the names relevant to the information which we are uh, providing it so to create a database this is the syntax create database and you have to give the database name and once you finish giving the database name always you have to terminate with a semicolon once you finish giving the statement so the termination represents that you have uh, that, the, that the, the, the query is over and once you press enter what will happen it will display an uh, it will display the message as query okay zero is affected i'll tell you how it works okay see here to work with sql and now to create a database for example i'm going to create a database here create database school one and if i i'm terminating it with semicolon and if you press enter so this is how the message will be displayed so query okay one row affected which means my database has been created okay once you finish creating a database you have to open the database to work with it similarly if you only uh, after creating the folder only when you open the folder you will be able to store all your files right without opening the folder you cannot save any of your files so to open the database you have to use the query use database name so if i give use the database name which i have created the same name i have to give here and the query is use database name so if i press enter it will display a message as database changed which means i have uh, my database is now ready to work with it right so semicolon if you consider it as a standard way to end the sql statement always whenever you finish giving query you have to terminate it with semicolon that represents the end of the sql statement so now i have opened my database school one and after creating database and after entering into it you have to start creating tables inside it so to create the table you have to follow up a separate syntax and uh, in the next class let us see how to create tables and how to insert values inside it so I hope you understood till this session and we'll meet in the next class children. Thank you.